This thing with Kavinsky, he's a player. He's not good enough for you. You're innocent. You're not like other girls. He's a typical guy. You can't trust him. Josh, shut up. Hello friends, my name is Lauren and welcome back to my channel. So, as you can tell from the title today, we will be talking about To All the Boys I Loved Before. Now, I read this book originally about two years ago in the summertime, I want to say. I really did enjoy it at the time. I don't think it was my favorite read of all time, but I definitely enjoyed the story. And now actually, I believe when this video is posted, the second movie has actually come out for the trilogy. I wanted to reread the book and kind of voice my opinions on both the book and the movie. So I decided to start off with the first book, To All the Boys I Loved Before. I will be talking about the second book shortly, but first, I wanted to talk about the first book and all my opinions on it. So in this video, I will be going over a bunch of different details from the book and the movie, talking about which one I liked more, why, all the reasons behind that. I have a full book review in this video uh, for this book as well. However, I am glad that I was able to watch the movie. I think the movie was super cute and overall I'm just really excited to talk about the story and all the different takes on it and all my opinions on it as well. So first we're just going to jump into a little bit overview of what To All The Boys I Love Before is about. So we follow the main character Laura Jean. She is 16 years old and she is a very quiet kind of girl. She doesn't really go out very much. She doesn't really try to be that adventurous. She kind of just sticks in her comfort zone quite a bit. However, something she's done in her lifetime is write five love letters to the guys she has liked. Whether it's true love, however she feels about it, or liked for just one day, five crushes have just stood out to her so she's written them five love letters and she never mailed out these love letters they're actually in her room in a box somehow some way though these love letters got mailed out to each of the five guys and it kind of follows the story of that and how she deals with each of the guys getting their love letters she wrote a lot of the love letters during her middle school years so it's kind of awkward now that she's a grade 11 in high school seeing that all these middle school guys she liked now have these letters from her written so long ago and so that's the end of the story we follow i do agree that this was a very interesting concept however i do think the movie executed it very 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 much better is that even a sentence it is now and so for the book i gave a book a two out of five stars now i'm sorry if you like this book okay i really am i will try not to be too negative no i'm gonna be pretty negative but Please don't take offense to any of my opinions because these are just how I feel. I'm not attacking anyone in any kind of way. But this is my opinion on the book. I feel this was a very surface level like character growth book. We meet a couple main characters throughout the story, but I honestly feel that none of them really grew by the time we got to the end. I would say in the movie, I like almost all of the characters. In the book, I only like Kitty and the dad. I'd say both they're my only characters I actually enjoyed in the story or didn't have a problem with at least at some point or another. I'd say also in the book, there's a lot of plot convenience and things just thrown in for the sake of conflict, which is not really something I am about per se. I much prefer having, you know, an in-depth story with many different things going on and reasons for why they're going on rather than just here's some stuff to read. I also didn't like the main characters too much. I really didn't like any of them to be honest. If I had to pick one I would say Lara Jean but at some points she just really annoyed me as well so for that reason I just really wasn't a big fan of this book. I'll be going into details throughout this video but a little bit of information on the movie. The To All The Boys I Loved Before movie was hands down fantastic. It was cute. It had the nice romance. It had some character development. It had some nice scenes, better main characters. There was only like one character and like one thing that I was kind of like whatever about, but I definitely think if you had to experience this story, experience the film. I think this book has been presented much better in the movie format than it does in the book. The ending is better. The overall character stories are better. There's actual growth in them and there's actually more of like plot you see along the story as well and things aren't really just thrown in there for convenience. So I do think some of the things they cut out was done intentionally and really did make the story better in this case. Overall I had a bunch of small problems with To All The Boys I Love Before in the book form but the movie was just near perfect. Like it was such a more enjoyable story that way so I would definitely recommend the movie over the book any day. I think now I'm going to try to get into more of the details as to why I liked the movie so much and as to why I did not like the book so much 
much. So if you do not want to get spoiled, do not watch this part. If you don't really care that much, or you've read it, or you've watched it already and you want to stay, then let's just get started. So we're going to start off with the book. And like I said, I gave this book a 2 out of 5 stars. And the reason I didn't give it like a 1 star or something like that is because there were aspects I did enjoy about it. I did enjoy some of the romance, and there were a couple cute scenes and a couple things that just really made me enjoy the story. Like some parts of the romance were nice, and sometimes there were some conversations that were had that I did enjoy and thought made the book better. However, there were many things about the book that I did not like. And we're going to start off with the characters. Like I already said the only characters I actually liked were Lara Jean's dad and her younger sister Kitty. I love those characters 100% all the way through the book. There was no problems I had with them. They were the best thing probably in the book. However, every other main character we might have a problem with. First off, Margo. Margo seemed too perfect and her opinions throughout the book never really changed. I understand a big part of Margo's character is being the oldest sister and looking out for her whole family and kind of taking on that motherly role because their mother had died early on. And so I understand why she was always kind of strict like point blank, but I feel like we don't spend enough time with her character to really make that believable. I felt it was very surface level, like we didn't really understand the true meaning behind it until a little bit towards the end, but it just felt not very believable to me and more annoying than anything. I honestly just felt Margot was there to add conflict, especially towards the end of the book when we're kind of getting to the climax of the story. I understand that the sisterly relationships were such a big part of this story, but I do feel that Margot's character could have been explored so much more than just having the surface level like perfect child motherly figure. If we spent more time with her in general between Laura Jean and herself, I feel they could have had more open honest discussions uh, at the beginning or towards the end of the book. Just I feel like that would have enhanced the whole theme of sisterly relationships. Her disappearing for most of the book as well and not hearing too much from her kind of takes away from that theme. I also kind of disliked Laura Jean at the beginning of the book, but I kind of grew to like her as more of the story went on. I will say, however, I found her kind of boring, predictable, and like too quirky to the point where she was just trying too hard. This book was published in 2014 and being like that quirky like Pinterest Tumblr girl was kind of a big trend at the time and I definitely feel the author was trying to relate to the girls of that time a little too much so I don't think that stands the test of time even a couple years afterwards. There's a scene where Peter confronts Laura Jean about the letter and he says look he says kindly I think you're cute in a quirky way. First off, if you call someone quirky, like what are you doing? Like that's not really a compliment. And then two pages later, Laura Jean says, I try to shrug him loose, but he won't let go. I haven't figured out that part yet, but I will. I lift my chin. I'm quirky like that. And I'm just like, stop. There's also the part where she's trying to figure out if she wants to change the color of her room. And she says, the only question is what color? Lavender, cotton candy pink, something bold like turquoise? I don't know, I just see so many girls make fun of their turquoise walls that they made in middle school. And the fact that she wants a turquoise wall, I feel is just trying to play the role of the quirky girl like too hard. So those are just a couple of examples of the book where she literally states herself that she's quirky and Peter calls her quirky. I'm like, the author could have used another word and I'm just not a fan of how she used it. I also believe Laura Jean had no character growth. There was a very surface level growth she had in the book and it mostly went along the lines of, oh, I always try to like the guys that will never go for me because I'm scared of how it will end. And then Peter calls her out on this sometime in the book and she's like, oh shoot, you're right, and then she goes for Peter, kind of, but the book doesn't even end that way, so I don't really know what she learned. It was very surface level growth, and that was the only thing in there. And so I'm just, I'm just not a big fan of her character and her growth as a character in the story because there essentially was none. Next up, I wanna talk about Peter and Josh. These are kind of the two guys that make up the love triangle thing kind of going on in the story. I do think the love triangle was done well, but we'll kind of talk about that later, but them as their own characters, wasn't really a fan of. Sometimes they were okay, other times, majority of the time, they weren't. First off, I just want to say to Peter Kavinsky, are you okay? This is the scene where they're, Peter and Lara Jean are making their contract and he says, are people really going to buy it if we never touch each other in public? He groans, you got to give me something here, Lara Jean. I have a reputation to uphold. None of my friends will believe I suddenly turned into a monk to date you. How about at least a hand in your back jean pocket? Trust me, it'll be strictly professional. First off, where did this man ever see that happen? Never. I hope never. 
Also, is that not just weird? Like, I understand the point. <laughs> Please, stop. Stop. Ugh. Another thing he does a lot also is kind of make some general statements, like, against girls. So, I'm just not really about that. And so one thing he says, I can't find the page exactly, but he says, I don't understand you girls. As soon as I figured you out, you like confused me. And I'm like, bro, like get over yourself. Like not every girl is the same. You ain't, you ain't cool. Like calm yourself. I liked the addition. No, I did not like the addition. I liked the attempt at adding Peter's friends into the mix, but I thought they were just weird. Here's a couple quotes from the friends. Gabe says, you're so little, you could fit in my pocket. Then Gabe suddenly grabs me and throws me over his shoulder like I'm a kid and he's my dad. He starts spinning around in a circle and all the guys are cracking up. I'm gonna adopt you, Large. You're gonna be my pet. I'll put you in my old hamster cage. Am I the only person that sees a problem with that? Like, bro, if your girl is meeting your friends, you don't say you're gonna put her in a hamster cage. Oh my god, I hope boys have improved. <laughs> I will also say there was one cute thing Peter did and I kind of enjoyed it when he was driving Kitty for the first time to school and Kitty had this like yogurt thing and he was like, oh my god, this is so good, what is it? And then they had that cute scene together. I kind of did enjoy that part as well. I thought that was well done. Overall though, Peter was not really that cool of a person. He was more or less your stereotypical jock kind of guy. And in a book like this, you have so much opportunity to meet the dude because the book basically revolves around him, to an extent at least. But it just kind of felt very car cardboard cutout a bit with small things here or there, but it just felt like it could have been done so much he could have been so much more. And for Josh, he's okay. I will say though that there is one thing he says where I immediately do not like him anymore. This is a scene between Josh and Lara Jean. It says, he signs heavily and adjusts his glasses. This thing with Kavinsky, not again, Josh. He's a player. He's not good enough for you. You're innocent. You're not like other girls. He's a typical guy. You can't trust him. Josh, shut up, okay? Girl knows her life, she's okay. She doesn't need you to tell her she's not like other girls. That's not a compliment, oh my God. Also, it's just like, bro, like what is this? Like in the book, Peter is such like a jock kind of guy and he even says it himself. He's like, yeah, none of the guys are gonna believe it if I like don't like want to get with you in any kind of way. And then Josh says that to him. Like, could this be like any more stereotypical? Because I'm not a fan, I'm just saying. Also, not to mention just about Josh, but there's a lot of kissing in here that happens without like consent and stuff. And some people might be like, it's okay, you can do it without consent. It's just a kiss, it's whatever. But like Josh kisses Laura Jean, like, um, like without any kind of anything. Literally when she's dating Peter or fake dating Peter, but he doesn't even know that. Uh, Laura Jean kisses Peter in the middle of the hallway without saying anything. And I feel like Peter kissed Laura Jean sometime in the book as well without saying something. I don't really remember, but that's like at least two instances where there was no prior talking about anything. So I'm just like, this is not a very good example for how relationships should run. One more thing about Josh that kind of annoyed me overall was the fact that he was so annoyed at Laura Jean for never telling him that she liked him in the past and like in the present. He, it was like, if you liked Laura Jean in the past and you were mad she never told you because you could have ended up dating her instead of Margo, that's kind of your own fault too because if you like someone and you don't tell them but then you end up dating someone else but you find out they liked you if you would have told them like you could have been dating like there's no point of dating someone else if you already like some like what is his problem if he really liked Laura Jean he would have said no to Margo and asked Laura Jean out or asked Laura Jean out before anything between him and Mario even developed another character I did not like is Genevieve she serves no point in the story her only point in the story is to have conflict between Laura Jean and Peter and just cause a bunch of drama that's really unnecessary I understand why she was important to the story because otherwise there would be no reason for Laura Jean and Peter to get together but she's just so rude the whole time she has no character development she has such a weak motive as well it kind of makes no sense to how rude she is throughout the book and I just did not like her at all that's kind of all I have to say for the characters in the book and so the fact that the characters really suck immediately knocks off at least two stars for me because there can be a good plot and I can kind of enjoy the characters but the characters were bad in this book I'm not gonna lie it, it just I wish there was more. There could have been so many opportunities to give us more and there wasn't. It was so surface level and Laura Jean herself was also kind of boring and so for that reason I did not really like the characters 
at all. Now I want to go into the plot a little bit of the book. The book's plot idea, I really liked it. The execution of it was kind of iffy in some cases. I will also say there was many instances of plot convenience where things were just thrown in there for the sake of being thrown in there. One thing I talked about before already was the fact that Laura Jean kissed Peter in the middle of the hallway. If you think in real life that would ever happen, a random girl running up kissing some random guy in the middle of everyone else, I fear that is the most plot convenience thing you could ever put in there. Like there was no warning for that. She had no reason to even do that. She could have thought of anything else, but she was like, no, I, I'm gonna go kiss him. Girl, calm yourself. Another thing, when Laura Jean was in Margot's room, she magically finds a letter from Josh written to Margot that's like this big. And it's like, we had sex, oh my god. I know you didn't really want to, but like we did, now you feel bad. I don't even know what he was saying, bro. But the fact that she was just searching through things and found this letter saying that, I was just like, really? Really? Does that, does that really make sense? Are you really gonna find a letter? Why would she keep this? I feel like it was so stupid to add that in there and the fact that that whole thing with them never doing it until they were like met these criteria things I felt was just pointless. Like they did not talk about it at all. It was just added in there for conflict again even though it really made no sense to the actual story. And one more thing for plot convenience as well towards the end of the book when everyone is over at their like Christmas party thing. Laura Jean is talking with Peter all of a sudden Josh shows up out of nowhere and then all of a sudden Margot shows up out of nowhere and they all just hear the things that they weren't supposed to hear at the exact time when they showed up. I was like, bro, where is all this plot convenience coming from? And I also think Lara Jean meeting John, one of the guys she sent the letters to, was pointless. Like, I think it sets up a bit for the second book, but I honestly felt it was pointless. It, it's, it's five pages long and adds no value to the story. So it just happens and then it's never talked about again. So I think that could have been cut out just saved to the second book. And last thing for the plot is the ending. The ending sucked. This was not an ending. This was a cliffhanger done wrong, okay? The ending to this book, she ends it by writing a love letter to Peter, I think, telling him that she actually does like him, but we don't know because it doesn't carry on. So you have to read the second book to know. But normally at the end of a book, there's some kind of conclusion of some kind. There was nothing in this book to hold on to, and it's not even a good kind of cliffhanger where you're like, I need the next book right away. It's just like you're annoyed when you finish this book. And so for that reason, I, I don't know. I just did not like the book. All right, enough on the plot, a little bit about the romance and friendships in the novel, and then we'll kind of dive into a bit on the movie and that kind of thing. For the romance, the main romance in this book is between Lara Jean and Peter Kavinsky, obviously, and at times I did like their romance. I did like the times where they met the families, and I liked the cute like road trip thing to the vintage store. I thought that was kind of adorable. I like the scene with Kitty and her yogurt. I do think they overall had some good times together, and I did like some of the talks they had on the ski trip as well. I definitely think that really added something. However, I I did often feel that it felt like they were actors on a stage and I felt like they were overcompensating like everything they were saying. They were being so dramatic or not dramatic enough or just being too stupid and it just felt not real. I understand the relationship was not real but if you're in a fake relationship acting, pretending to act real, you'd have real relationship things but they were just being too like dramatic in places they didn't have to be and I just didn't really like that part about the relationship. In terms of friendships, there weren't really many. To be honest, Laura Jean has one friend and one friend only, which is Chris, and they don't even hang out that much in the book anyway, so it doesn't really make too much of an impact, but it was a nice addition to the story. I already said Peter's friends are just weird. I didn't really like them that much, they didn't add too much. I wish they focused a little bit more on the friendships because they did have a big focus on the sisterly relationships, which I definitely think added something. Anyways, that's kind of all my opinions on this book. Overall, I am not a huge fan. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars due to some things that I enjoy, like some scenes and conversations, but overall, from a review standpoint, I would not recommend this book. If you were to experience it, you should experience it via the movie, which is what we're going to talk a little bit about now. I don't have as many details for the movie as I do the book, but some overall things, I just 
really enjoyed the movie more. I will say there are a few differences between the book and the movie, but I honestly think the movie did a good job with changing some things up. Firstly, the sisterly relationships are not shown as much in the movie as they are in the book. In the book, there's a solid amount of time dedicated to the sisterly relationships and how much they mean to one another. In the movie, it's there, but it's not as much of the focus. It more focuses on Laura Jean and her love life kind of dilemma. I also think in the movie, I liked a lot of the characters way more than I did in the book. However, I will say that Margot still felt kind of boring and could have been better than she was in the book. However, I will say like the redemption at the end for her was well done and much better than it was in the book I felt, so I will give it that. I will also say Genevieve, I think she was well, better well done in the movie, but I still don't like her. But look, that's okay because she was like meant to be not liked, uh, but I think her character as a whole was just done better in the movie. They also do cut out the vintage shop scene that I really liked, but I think their, their relationship carried through enough with the other scenes that they could have taken it out and it would have been fine. I think it would have added a couple more minutes to the movie that probably just didn't need to exist. I will also say towards the end, the big party that was supposed to happen didn't end up happening. Between the book and the movie, the mention of her mom's death was mentioned a couple times and while they were mentioned differently in both the book and the movie, I think the movie does a really good job on it and I was literally like sad just watching the scene between her and her dad just talking about it and it was such a sweet moment and I definitely think it was done really really well and was just so wholesome and done in such a loving way. Overall for the movie though, I can't think of too many instances where I was like, oh I don't like this or something something something. I will say at the end though, there was one scene where Laura Jean's like sex tape, even though it wasn't a sex tape, was released on Instagram and she like told Margot to take it off Instagram so then Margot anonymously emailed Instagram and got it taken down. I was like, girl, that's not how Instagram works. Like, are you going to really say Margot's your saving grace for literally hitting the report button on Instagram? I'm just saying that was a little extra there. But overall, it was a good movie. I would watch it again. This is actually my second time reading and watching both the book and the movie. And I definitely think my experience towards the movie was more positive than I did watch it the first time. And my opinion towards the book is more negative than the first time. Overall though, I think that's all my thoughts on the book and the movie. Overall, I am happy I decided to experience this story again. While I'm not really happy too much with my experience with the book, I would say the movie was really, really worth it. Really cute and a perfect movie to watch around Valentine's Day. I think it's really sweet, lighthearted, and it's just a good time for me to watch. Overall, I think that's all my opinions on the first book in the To All The Boys I Loved Before trilogy. Very soon I will be doing this same type of video, but on the second book, P.S. I Still Love You. So hopefully I have better thoughts on that once I read and watch the book slash movie. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you have any opinions on the To All The Boys I Loved Before book or movie movie or the second one coming out, no spoilers, but let me know your thoughts because I'm actually kind of interested to see if anyone else didn't like this book like I didn't. Anyways, I will see you all very soon in a new video, so until then, bye.